Alexis here and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you don't know who I am and you don't know what I do, I'm a floral designer and in this channel I help others jumpstart their floral design career. So if you have a passion to become a florist or you just love flowers, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram at Flowers by Alexis for daily flower photos, business tips, tutorials, and hacks. In today's video, I'm doing a long requested video. You guys constantly DM me on Instagram asking me to make a floral design for beginners class. So this past Saturday on February 20th, I actually hosted my very first Zoom class. In that class, I taught people some floral design basics and I decided that this would be a great YouTube video to make as well. In today's video, we're going to cover how to choose your flower vase, how to choose your colors and your flowers, and how to actually design a beautiful garden style flower arrangement. If you're interested in registering for my future Zoom classes, click the link in the description box below. That'll take you to my website. There, you can sign up for all of my future classes that I will be coming out with in the spring. If you guys have any recommendations for Zoom classes that you would like to be a part of, comment down below and I'll look through the comments and see what I can make a class out of. All right guys, so enough of my talking. Let's get to the video. Let's go design some flower arrangements. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to discuss is how to actually choose your vase. When I'm taking my flower orders, I always like to ask like, where is the vase going? So if it's going on like a dining room table, I like to do a smaller vase that's like low and long so that way the people can actually see over the arrangement. Another thing that determines the size of the vase is the price. When I'm taking my flower orders, I also like to ask the price of the vase. So a quick way that you can like maneuver that question in without like outright asking how much money do you want to spend, you can simply just ask where is the vase going? And from there you can kind of determine the size. So if it's going on like a dining room table, that's going to be like a lower, longer arrangement. Um, if the arrangement is going on like a kitchen counter, those are typically like bigger, larger arrangements. So that would be something in like a large vase. So when I'm taking my flower orders, I'm like, hey, you know, like where is the arrangement going to be going? Um, they're like, oh, it's going on my kitchen counter. Then I say stuff like, oh, okay, that's perfect. That's gonna be like in a 10 inch vase, that's gonna be like a large um, flower arrangement that typically runs in like the 80 to $100 range. And then from there, people usually go like, oh, okay, that works because they want something like large and pretty for the dining room. Price affects the size of the vase and where it's going also affects the size of the vase. Now, something that I do that sets me apart from my competition is that I actually offer ceramic vases like the vase you see here. Um, I like using ceramic vases better because they are just like a nicer, more hardier vase. Um, you can actually repurpose these vases and use them like once the flowers die. I also noticed that a lot of the flower shops in my area do not offer ceramic vases, they only offer clear glass vases. So for me, that's just like a way that I can be better than my competition around me. I'm um, just offering like a more quality vase. How do I actually pick my flowers for my flower arrangements? So what I like to do is I like to think about first, like what's in season? A client asks for like dahlias in March, I'm gonna have to tell them no because dahlias only bloom in like my area, they only bloom from like October to December. Then after that, they're not in season. So that's definitely something that I like to keep in mind when I'm choosing my flowers. I like to think about like what's in season and what I can easily get. So usually flowers that are in season also cost less because like you can get a lot of that type of flower because like I just said, it's in season. So usually you can get a lot of it for a cheaper price. What also helps me pick my flowers is the type of occasion. So if the flowers are for like a birthday, I would typically choose like brighter, happier flowers because birthdays are like brighter, happier events. But if the flowers are for like sympathy, that's like a sadder event, I would typically do like neutral palette, like maybe like whites and creams. So that is definitely something that will affect the colors and the flowers that I choose will be like the occasion. Now, when I'm looking for flowers, I like to find at least two main focal flowers. So what I'm looking for is just like a really nice flower that I'm gonna make like the statement piece of my arrangement. That's gonna be like the flower that like my entire arrangement is based off of. So for today, I'm going to be using sunflowers, really gorgeous sunflowers that we're gonna be using today. And I also 
found these really pretty like orangey roses. I thought these were like absolutely gorgeous. And then all the flowers that I choose after that just kind of like complement the vocal flowers. Now before I start designing my flowers, the first thing I always like to do is make sure I have a clean vase. So I always like to put like fresh water in my flower vase. Dirt and debris in the water will create bacteria for the flowers and that will kill your flowers. It'll make your flower arrangement like die prematurely. All right guys, so now it's finally time to design your arrangement. What you're gonna wanna do first is you're gonna wanna create some structure for your flowers to sit in. So what I've done here is I've created like a little chicken wire grid. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to keep all of our flowers in place and it's gonna keep everything from moving around. In the past, florists have used floral foam, but I've actually discovered that floral foam is like really bad for you. Um, it's really bad for your respiratory system. It's bad for the environment, like it gets into the water. If you're using floral foam, I highly recommend to just stop using floral foam. I have an entire video dedicated to just like the end of floral foam. So what you're gonna wanna do to create this structure in the base, you're gonna wanna create like a little pillow and this is kind of like a little dome circle thing. Um, I like having like a little two layer thing because it really helps keep the flowers from moving around. What you're gonna do is you're going to take a separate vase and you would like stick that into the vase like this and you would just tape it on either side with like a little four section grid. All right guys, so once you have like a good base and structure for your flowers to sit in, you're going to want to then take your greens and start greening up your vase. The goal is to hide the ugly, which is like the mechanics of the arrangement. So you don't wanna see like any of the tape or the chicken wire. So what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna cover all that up. So the green that I'm starting with today, this is called Salal, um, also lemon leaf. So what I'm doing first is I'm just going to green up my vase. I'm gonna just hide the mechanics. You don't wanna see any of that, you wanna like, have it so that way like it's pretty much invisible. So what I'm doing, I'm just starting low and I'm just greening up like the outer rim first and then I'm gonna work my way and start greening in. Okay. Now I have this like eucalyptus that I want to use. This is called baby blue uke. And I'm going to just place this on one side of the vase. And I'll place this one here. And as you're placing stuff into the vase, you also want to make sure that none of your stems have any greens or any like leaves on it. Um, everything that goes into the water, you want it to be clean because like I stated before, you don't want any bacteria in the water. That will prematurely kill your plants and you don't want that to happen. You want your flowers to last as long as possible. So this is what we have so far. All right, so now that we have greened up our vase and we have like hidden all the ugly and all the mechanics and all that, Next, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the shape of the arrangement. So what I like to do is I like to have like a high point in my arrangement and a low point. I find that this is really common with like garden style arrangements. A lot of garden style arrangements have like a high point and a low point or they are U-shaped. This is more of like a U-shaped arrangement back here. We've created our high point with the eucalyptus. And as we like start to arrange and stuff, we're going to think about also creating that like droopier down point. So something to think about. Now we're going to start adding in some of our flowers. So what I like to do first is I always like to add like the structure flowers in. So a structure flower, for example, would be like this field daisy you see here. As an example of a structural flower. And you see what I'm doing here? I am just pulling off all of the leaves from the stem. I don't want any of these in my water. I don't want my arrangement to die. So that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do first is just add in my daisy. Um, I already have like 
some flowers on this side of the arrangement. So to balance out this side, I'm going to place flowers on this side of the arrangement. Another thing that I have found that's common with other like garden style styled arrangements, um, there's usually like a little low center point and then everything kind of like grows and comes from that one area and like expands out. So, all right, so now we're gonna rotate our vase. And it's also important to do that because you really wanna make sure that all sides of your arrangement look good. Um, sometimes people forget to rotate and then like you're done and you like look at the other side of your arrangement and you're like, oh, that's uh, kind of ugly. It looks like it's missing something. So now I'm going to take this beautiful yellow solidago and I'm just gonna clean my stems because I don't want that to get into my water. Now you see how, again, like this side just has a lot going on here. I think I want to start adding to this side. So I'm gonna place this flower on this side. So something to keep in mind is balance. You wanna make sure your arrangement is balanced from one side to the other side. I also like to cluster my flowers in groups of twos or threes. I find that that's also kind of common in other garden style styled arrangements. Um, there usually is flowers in like twos or threes that are just kind of clustered together. And again, guys, as you place things, you wanna make sure everything has a nice clean cut. Nothing should go into your vase without a clean cut. Here's what we have done so far. Um, something that I really like to do is I like to place all of my flowers on different heights. Any good garden style or Pinterest style arrangement that you see on the internet, um, all the flowers are typically on like different levels. There's usually things like poking out in different places. This is more of like a wilder bouquet look that you tend to see on the internet these days. If you want like a more like roundy moundy arrangement, you would place all the flowers on like the same height. But for like a good garden style arrangement, you really want all of your flowers on like different heights and different levels. You want things poking out of weird areas and uh, yeah, that would really, that's really what's gonna help you get like a good quality garden style arrangement. So something to keep in mind also like to design my flower arrangements like in each like in each quarter you know how when we were putting our structure together with our chicken wire and we like did the grid with the tape so what I like to do is I like to take each of those four sections and I like to kind of like make it its own separate arrangement and then towards the center I kind of combine all the flowers together to make it look a little more seamless so you'll see what I mean like as I design but as of right now, we have just worked in this section. So we've just worked in like the top quarter right here and we just added flowers coming out of here. So now we have our daisies in this opposite quarter right here as well. And then we don't really have anything in here just yet. So I think I'm gonna work here next. I think I'm gonna take this hydrangea and with hydrangea, you just wanna take off like the leaves. I usually like to leave like the two little top leaves but I take off all of the big leaves. These big leaves take up all of the water from the flower. So you just wanna make sure you're taking all those leaves off. I'm measuring my flowers to cut into my vase. I just like to measure with the table. So the table kind of tells me how much I should cut off. So I go from like the lip of the vase and then I see like how much I need to cut off. So I know I need to come about here when I cut my flower. So snip. And I'm going to just insert the hydrangea at this fourth quarter right here. So once we add our structure flowers in, we're then going to add in our focal flowers. These are the flowers that are gonna be like the star of the show flowers. But what I'm gonna start with first is I'm gonna start with my sunflowers. And I think I'm going to actually cluster all of my sunflowers like in the center right here. So I'm gonna start and work in threes first and then if I need more, I'll add more. But I'm going to start by just adding a sunflower right in like the front, like right there. So I'm going to snip that first. And we are going to add that first sunflower right in the center there. Alrighty. Now, because we don't want to forget about the back, like I said, you want to make sure you're working on all sides of your arrangement because you never want to forget about 
the back and all that important stuff. I'm going to place the flower like right in here. Alrighty, so now we've got our three sunflowers like kind of clustered there. I think now I'm going to take maybe some of my mini carnations. Yeah. And I want to start building out on this side as well. So now we're focusing on like this like back quadrant here. I feel like there's just not really that much going on here. These are really cool. Um, carnations get like a really bad rap for some reason. I, oh, not some reason. So the story behind carnations is that um, carnations were commonly used as funeral flowers back in like the 80s and the 90s. So a lot of people associate carnations as like a funeral flower and as like just not like a good, pretty, happy flower. I just absolutely love carnations. I'm always trying to change people's minds about like the flower and all that. So that's just a flower that I like to commonly use in my arrangements. I love carnations. I think they're gorgeous. Okay, so now to further add to like my focal flowers, I'm going to add in my orange roses next. So I'm going to just take this little guy here and these roses were not processed yet so I'm going to take my little handy dandy rose stripper tool here and I'm just gonna like take my rose and go all the way down the stem set that aside just do like maybe five we'll do five roses I'm gonna put like one here, kind of just feel like this little area right here is a little boring. You just like need a little something pretty there. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. You see how pretty that looks there? Again, just clustering my flowers, still working on the same section. I think I'm gonna place this guy like maybe right here. And notice how nothing is on the same height. That is very important with a garden style arrangement, always making sure things are on different heights and levels. I'm starting to like bring the colors from this side over to this side a little bit. So now I'm gonna take my other rose. Yeah, maybe we'll place him there or maybe we'll place him like up there. Ooh, maybe I'll place my, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So because we have like a bunch of white flowers like right here, um, I'm gonna take this white color and start bringing it back here again because we wanna just balance out this arrangement and just like really think about we're placing things here. So I'm gonna take this white rose and place him at the bottom there to complement the other side of this arrangement. You see why I did that guys? Like you see, you see what I mean? It'll just help like really like bring that to life a little bit. Okay, cool. Ranunculus is top, definitely like top five for me. Um, I just think it's really beautiful. It's kind of like a rose, but it's a little prettier if you ask me. So I'm gonna place him right here, right off to the side. It's just kind of getting a little dark and lost over here. So I think just having like a bright flower to really like brighten that area up. This like little like pinkish yellowish one, I'm gonna place it here to just kind of help like bring all these colors in together at once. So give him a fresh cut. We are going to place him like right there. Yep, that's beautiful. I'm thinking maybe we place the carnation there just to kind of like hide that ugly a little bit. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. So as I go, I just kind of like to play around with my stems. I kind of just like to pull things up, push things in. I have some of this white Monty that I think I actually am going to use. I was debating on using it, but this is like a good piece of it because it like comes in like a lot of different sprigs right here. Like you can really break this one up and make this like a whole bunch of different stems. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm um, just gonna hide like some of this like ugly in here. Just a little bit of Monty here just to help make it look a little prettier. I really like that this is white because we already have like the white hydrangea. So this is really gonna help like bring those colors in together and it's gonna help like blend everything and make everything look seamless. So I'm gonna stick that right in here because I kind of felt like this area was starting to get boring. I think right up in here I'm gonna just place one more rose. I just feel like that little area kind of needs something. Up in hair, up in hair. It really makes like a garden style arrangement, like that signature garden style look is really like the wispy airy flowers. You typically add those in last because like with like the ranunculus and the more delicate flowers, you wanna be placing those in like last so that way they don't get lost, they don't break. So I'm going to use some of these. These are called Billy Balls. I really love these. These are like one of my favorite things to use in the arrangement. Um, I just think they look really cool. Like they kind of remind me of like Horton Here's a Who. <laughs> one Billy Ball. Two Billy Ball. Okay. So I'm just pretty much following the shape of my arrangement. So like you can really start to see it now, like towards the end, like what I mean by like the center is kind of like recessed and low and then everything kind of fireworks out. Now I have some of this Veronica. Let's add that little piece of Veronica like right here in the arrangement. So now we've got like a nice cha firework explosion. So I have one piece of ranunculus left and I really like this because it kind of has like multiple stems coming out of it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is a good quality piece right here. Just to add to the firework effect. I have this gorgeous piece of pink lisianthus that I really want to use. And I'm thinking that I want to place this guy like high and proud because I really only have one of him and I really just want him to be like up high and tall. So I'm going to place him like right up in here. So that way the whole world can see the beauty that this guy has to offer. So, so, so. I think that this arrangement is pretty much done. Um, the only other thing that I like to do at the end is that I just like to make sure that I got like all these like little areas down here. So just kind of like really make sure your arrangement looks good on all angles. So like I see like a little blank spot right there. Probably just going to put like a little carnation just to hide that. All right guys, so this is the flower arrangement that I have created for you today. This is my garden style, Pinterest style, whatever you wanna call it, style. This is my arrangement. <laughs> the only other thing that I really do with my flower arrangements like after this particular point is that I simply just get up and I walk away. I'll come back in like a half hour and see if there's anything that I've missed, see if there's anything that I wanna change or adjust. Um, if this is like a flower arrangement for like a photo shoot or something like that, then what I would actually do is I would actually take out my iPhone, take a picture of the arrangement, and then just like see if there's any like holes or anything that I'm missing sometimes, like because you're standing so close to the arrangement and you're like working like this, you don't see like the little things, step away from your arrangement, maybe get some coffee, uh, I don't know, watch an episode to a TV show, then come back to your arrangement and see if there's really anything that you miss. Questions that I got asked at the end of my Zoom class um, about the arrangement that I had made, like for the demonstration, this one, for example, um, people were asking me like, how much would I charge for an arrangement like this? So I would charge anywhere from like, 80 to 90 dollars for something like this you know what really affects the cost of the vase is like the types of flowers that you use and if you're using like roses and garden roses and 
um, just like those higher quality and flowers, then you're going to be probably paying a little bit more for those. So um, really just make sure that like whatever your flowers cost at wholesale price, make sure that you're really just like charging correctly to price out your arrangements. But um, yeah, if you guys want a more detailed video on how I price out my flower arrangements just by looking at them, then let me know in the description box below. I would love to make a video on that, but I just, want to make sure that you guys are actually interested in those topics first before I just go making videos on things. So um, yeah, just let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in and I'll definitely make a video on that. Another question that I remembered that someone asked me on like my Zoom class, um, they were also asking me like, do I transport something like this? So what I would do is I would put it inside of like an 8x8 box. Um, I would stuff the 8x8 box with like some newspaper just to keep the vase from rattling around. Um, I would then take like some tissue paper just to like make it look pretty. And then I would then take this entire arrangement for transportation purposes. I like to put all my arrangements inside of milk crates. Um, I find that milk crates are just heavy. They don't move around too much in the car. Like if you put the arrangement in the milk crate, it won't tip over or, like while you're taking turns or driving. So um, if you're looking for like a good way to make sure that your flowers don't move around, then I recommend getting some milk crates to put your flower arrangements in. Um, if you don't have milk crates, you can also use like the deep flower boxes that like the roses come in. If you're a florist, you know what that means. Like when you get your roses in from your flower wholesaler, they usually put the roses in like these really deep boxes. Those boxes are excellent for delivering arrangements in, so keep those next time you get your flowers in so you can put these in. Hope you guys enjoyed this little arranging class. Um, again, if you guys want to sign up for any of my future Zoom classes, you can do that in the description box below. That will take you to the link to my website, and there you can register for all of my future spring classes. All right guys, thank you so much for making this arrangement with me. I had a ton of fun doing this with you guys today. I hope you guys took notes. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at flowersbylexis, and I will see you all soon with another video. Bye.